So we are three days away from Arnold UK. Pretty excited to be part of that with it being a new format for me. Again, uh, we have two events Friday night. I believe one event on Saturday morning, two events Saturday night, something like that. Um, anyway, it'll be cool to be part of the expo uh, and pretty keen to see all the other athletes just as a, a general fan of sport. Um, but <clears throat> I thought I'd go over the uh, lineup, go over the events. And it's becoming tradition to do some predictions. So we got Kim Udrek, who was at Worlds this year from Greenland. Uh, great deadlifter, good log presser. No log press in this comp, but really good deadlifter. And um, really solid guy, really enjoyable to be around. Bobby Thompson has dropped out. And I believe Big Z is in his place. Uh, so anytime competing against Big Z is uh, pretty special, uh, although beating someone when they're past their prime is, uh, it's not really the same, uh, but always cool to have him out there. Uh, Irvin uh, Toots, I think, they say, to they say Toots, I don't know, um, I don't like pretending to have an accent when I say names. Um, I don't know much about him other than he's had a pretty decent Strongman Champions League run, um, and he's been in the Strongman for ages. Then we have Rauno, amazing deadlift, uh, so really keen to go against him on that. Paul Smith, having a bit of a cracker year, uh, competed against him at uh, Giants Live in London at Royal Albert Hall, which he was in the mix really until Stones. He was on the podium, so definitely a threat to do well. Constantine, who is having a down year based on how he's been in the past, uh, but definitely still someone who could perform really well. Pa, who's got great events for him. Jerry Pritchett is not coming anymore. Uh, Ryan Bennett, who the guys in the UK, I, I don't know him at all, but the guys in the UK are very high on him uh, and wanted him to have a chance at the... Um, um, no, that was uh, Lewis Jack, sorry. And Lewis Jack is Scotland's 22, 22 strongest man. He's also in Glasgow. So the guys in the UK are really high on Lewis Jack, so that'll be cool. Ryan Bennett is a British guy, also coached by Laws. Uh, I think this is one of his biggest opportunities so far. Um, so that'll be fun. And then Gav Bilton, who, who doesn't like to see Gav Bilton? So pretty cool lineup, all in all. They've put together a pretty solid bunch, especially considering how the year is going for a lot of the top guys, where Stoltman's taking some time off, Martin's is, is very selective. Uh, oh, and adding to that list is a guy named um, Alexei Novikov, who's apparently uh, quality. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's the roster. Um, and looking at it, you know, I think myself and Alexei are easy picks to do well. But uh, someone like Pa, the events line up really well. Constantine, if, if he's back to form, could be really good. And... Gav Bilton, always improving. And then the guys that you just don't know. I don't know Ryan Bennett. I don't know Lewis Jack that well. And it's dumb to write anyone off because uh, we all saw what happened when I went to Worlds. And everyone thought I was a scrub as well. Maybe, maybe I am. But here are the events. Um, first, actually, I don't know what's first. I'm supposed to know what's first. But anyway, uh, we have the yoke. Uh, 500 kilograms for 10 meters. That's... Really, really good event for me uh, on two fronts. One, I, I don't think I'll have too much issue moving that well. Um, but every yoke is different. So the yoke at Shaw felt really good for how heavy it was. Uh, I would expect to do this in well under 10 seconds. Uh, but you never really know. Uh, but it doesn't take much out of me. So to get an event win that doesn't take much out of you is always uh, encouraging. And in this field, I don't think there's another guy who really stands out with the yoke. Um, Alexi can hold his own. Uh, again, I don't know a lot about a couple of the other guys, uh, but I think that one for me is, uh, I'd certainly be a heavy favorite in that. Who's, who's your biggest competitor in the yoke? Well, R Rob Kearney is really good. Um, Evan Singleton is really good when he's under control. The thing with Evan, though, is he'll either do it in 10 seconds or 17 seconds because he's dropped it because he's getting ahead of himself. 
Uh, but he's really quality with the yolk. I, I'm not sure if I'm leaving anyone out. I, I very well could be, but I think those are really the only two in, in competition if I were to look at them and say, well, I'll have to push pretty hard to, to get there. Uh, then we have deadlift for reps. Obviously, Rauno is going to be the favorite here. He won the World Deadlift Championship, but he's even better for reps than he is at singles. So uh, trying to keep up to uh, trying to keep up to him is going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully that number gets to double digits. I, I really think it could. Then we have bag over bar, and this is this goes quite heavy. So it gets up to twenty nine kilos, I believe. I think it's uh, five or six. Um, Five or six bags. Barben predicts me as the winner here. Don't know why. <laughs> um, but look, it, it could be a good event. Pa is actually quite good at this event as well. Great at the sandbags. Um, I really don't know how to pick it. Uh, this For me and Alexi, if you're looking at it as a two-horse race, I think bag over bar could determine a lot. A lot. If one of us doesn't perform well, that could cost a lot of points. Then we have dumbbell for reps. Alexi's a favorite here for sure. Um, but 100 kilos for reps in 75 seconds, I believe it is. Um, yeah, I, again, this could be another double-digit event. Uh, Alexi got eight with 110 kilos at Shaw. I got six with 110 kilos. Dumbbell's been good for me. Um, we'll see. That, that uh, Evolution 2XL sleeve felt phenomenal today, so we really be interesting to see. We have uh, stone carry. So this is, uh, this is interesting. I, I haven't done any sort of Denny stone before, and it's at both of my next competitions, so I get a bit of experience on that. I've been working hard at hook grip. Um, these are 130 and 160 kilos per hand. When we go to, when we go to uh, where people are strong and how they're strong, I think this would be a good event for me, uh, but you don't really know. You don't really know until you pick them up. Uh, so, fingers crossed. I know it's quite awkward, um, but you see the guys who do well in it. I think I fall in a similar category, like a Kevin Fairs moves super well, um, got good endurance. So maybe that'll help. Uh, we'll see. And then the final event is Atlas Stones, uh, 120 to 200 kilos. I was over the moon with how I performed on these at Shaw. I just keep improving, 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 and that's really the goal. So if I continue on that trend. I think I'd be one of the top at the Atlas Stone in this field. So is Alexi. You know, it really could come down to an exciting stone run between Alexi and I for the win here. When you look at all the events, how it all shakes out. You know, of the quality guys, Paul Smith, he's going to lose some points on deadlifts. Um, Constantine, Constantine just hasn't been, in, he hasn't been himself this year from what I see. Uh, he's really solid across the board, though, but Dumbbell, I know his shoulder's been giving him issues this year. Pa is pretty solid across the board. To be honest, I don't know how he goes on a, on a heavy yoke, uh, but, you know, he, he could be up there. But for the most part, I think, yeah, I think no mistakes. It's, it's myself and, and Alexi working hard for the top spot. Um, if I'm making the prediction, this is the first time I'll do it, and I, I think I'd be the favorite going into this event. So I think run it a thousand times over, and I think I win it 550 times. Alexi wins it 425 times, and someone else wins it 25 times. So you can never guarantee anything, but I think objectively the odds are in my favor in this one, and I'm pretty excited. If Arnold hands me the trophy and he asks me how I'm feeling, if you don't know the answer to that question already, then stop watching the video. <laughs> um, but that's how I think it'll shake out. I remember you saying uh, on a couple of your Instagram posts when you get posted up on like CBS and these kinds of things, like asking yourself, like, how is this my life, mm -hmm. right? Like how, like, take me through kind of like where you're sitting right now with, you know, you just made this prediction saying that you could probably come out on top on this yeah. and you're confident about it. Yeah. Like, how does it make you feel, man? It's, it's pretty wild, but it's wild athletically. And I can't be clear enough that... I don't think that anyone's a better person because they're a better athlete. And to me, being a better person matters a lot more than being a better athlete. So I back myself as one of the best strongmen in the world. I'd say top five at the moment. But how much weight do I put in that? Not a ton. Uh, it's, just, it's just pretty surreal being really good at anything. Uh, but 
I'd rather be a, a guy who works a, a nine to five and is nice to his family and his kids than to be OJ Simpson. <laughs> so I'm never losing the perspective there. But things have just happened so quickly. And one of the biggest things, I think a great takeaway for other people as well, is that uh, I've had to fight myself so many times on, like, no, you, you actually, like, it was a bit of a fluke at Worlds. Or, like, okay, you podiumed at one Giants Live because it was good events. Uh, okay, you podiumed at two Giants Live. And I, I, have to, I have to keep fighting that myself and to say, no, you actually are of this caliber. And I don't know how long that imposter syndrome hangs around for if it ever leaves. Uh, but that's sort of how I feel because I'm just me. I, I, I just, I'm just training. I'm just enjoying myself and competing. And I'm at the top level in something, but it doesn't feel any different than when I was at a sub-elite level in other things. Uh, and it's really, it's really all about how far you can push yourself. Which for me, I'm, not, I'm, I'm immensely proud of what I've done in Strongman. But it's not, uh, it's not the thing I'm most proud that I've done because it's come fairly naturally to me. I've only worked at it for a few years. So how, how proud could you be of something that you've worked at a few years and genetically happen to be really lucky that you're able to do? It's sort of, <laughs> it's like someone who starts bragging that they're rich because they won the lottery. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> how much are you going to fanboy when Arnold hands you that trophy? Okay, look. It's going to be cool because he inspired me to get into the sport and whatnot. Uh, I, I, but from a, from a, his personal life hasn't been great. You know, he's not someone I look up to as a, a life role model. So he's someone I look up to as an athlete. It remains in that context. And I think the, the coolest bit of it is that other people will understand. Like other people know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. And you go, I won his competition, one of his competitions and he handed me the trophy, people start to understand the, the magnitude of the sport. And uh, maybe I get a little bit more traction that way. And maybe I can impact a few more people that way. So that's how I look at it. Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't wait in a lineup to meet him. Uh, but if he's handing out the trophies, it'll be a, definitely a special moment. Who is your biggest role model? I, I, my late grandfather would be a big one. Um, he, very successful in business. Later in life, became a really good family man. I don't think he was early on. Um, but I, I don't have a person that I look to and say, this is who I want to be. I look at pieces of other people and say, I really admire that. Uh, just the same as you know, people. I've got a very good reputation for things that I've said and things that I've done in a short period of time. Uh, but I have hard moments where people don't, they don't know me. They don't know like, the bad sides of me. They don't know what I'm like when I get frustrated. or They don't know what I'm like when I'm having a down day. Um, so it, there's even parts of myself that I don't think are admirable, um, but naturally we all try and hide what those are. Uh, so yeah, I just try and pull different things from different people. Um, and like I said, Mel's dad saying that one thing, never met the guy, but he's impacted how I want to be as a dad. My dad works extraordinarily hard and, and I'd really look up to that. Uh, my mom's really compassionate and kind, so I, I'd like to pull that. My stepdad's literally always in a good mood. I, I'd love to have that element to me. Uh, so I think, to have one role model misses out on what people, who people are. And it's the old don't meet your heroes type of thing because no one's who you expect them to be. We're naked. We have this comp. How far out are we from the Giants? Giants is October 8th. So we are three weeks out. Three weeks from Giants? Yep. And then... How far? Six weeks? Six, six, six weeks, weeks out from uh, uh, Rogue. Crazy. Crazy. I, I, uh, honestly, I'm not really prepping for Rogue. It's not what this year's about. For me, this year's about getting experience, going to all these different things, being prepared for them in the future. And it's sort of a, a conflicting battle in my head where you never know when, you're gonna, when your career's going to be over. When something happens, you'll never be able to do it again. And on the other hand... I think, well, let's plan for the long term and let's make sure that, that I can be selective in the future and, uh, and do a few less comps, prep for all of them. At the same time, though, I'm like, I'm having so much fun. My body feels fine. I don't know how long it'll feel fine for, but I'm, I'm thinking back to it. Like, do I want to miss World Deadlift Championships? Probably not. Do I want to miss Royal, Royal Albert Hall? Probably not. I've heard Glasgow is incredible. So like, will I want to miss that? Probably not. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely going to go to Shaw. I'm definitely going to go to Worlds and Rogue, so long as they'll all have me. 
And then like, it's hard to say, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, because I'm in one piece and I'm having fun. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, end of October will be end of the season. Uh, then into an off season, uh, build a bit of a base back up. And then um, either Arnold's in America next year, which is probably the, the big one that I'm not sure that I do or not. And then uh, Worlds, then back into season. What, how long is your off season roughly going to be? Depends. So if I, if I do Arnold's, I believe that's in March. I think Worlds is in May. So it would be November, December, January, February. So four months. But there's a comp in Australia in January that I'd love to go back to uh, and compete in that. And, but, you know, I don't want to go back there if I'm not in form. Because people don't really, they don't understand that in Strongman there's a season. And if you're not in season, you're a different animal. Just like Luke at, at Shaw. And I, I, I just might not have the confidence in myself to go there knowing that I'd underperform. And yeah, I, I'd, uh, it's just not me. I just, I just couldn't go and turn up just to turn up. So one last question here before we sign this off here. What are you looking forward to most in the off season? Hmm. Being, being better to everyone else around me. Uh, the, it's such a selfish sport where I'm, I'm taking time away from the business. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm taking time away from my family. I'm taking time away from Ashley. Uh, and not just taking time away where I'm not there because <laughs> they probably like the breaks from me. Uh, but I'm not present. I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking about other things. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm, not able to, I'm not able to help out with things like, uh, like the cooking or um, I, I can't really take the dogs for a walk. And uh, stuff like that bothers me. And that's where there's a limit to what I'll sacrifice. And... You know, I'm, I'm basically at the limit at the moment. Uh, and, yeah, I, I'll get a little bit of rest as I need it. But I think Ash and I are going to go for a vacation in uh, January somewhere, somewhere tropical, go to an all-inclusive. Uh, just be able to turn off a bit for a week. Um, because at the moment, my days start at 5.30, and they finish at 9.30, 10 o'clock. And that's just life. That's what it is. And that's how I'm happy for it to be at the moment. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you sacrifice a little bit along the way, and my personality would tend to have me work my, work my ass off for 25 years so that we can have a great life in the process, having a shit life for 25 years. Uh, so Ashley's a good contrast for me in that regard. And I was having a great conversation uh, with Mel the other day, um, and she was sort of like, you have really clear goals for the future, and what li you want your life to look like, at 65, but not everything you do has you going towards that. For example, I want to be healthy when I'm 65, and my current lifestyle doesn't really promote being healthy at 65. Um, so it's always interesting, like talking to smart people and getting that self-reflection. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, it's good to have the balance in Ashley to, to keep me in check. It's good to surround yourself with people much smarter than you, which thankfully we're starting with a pretty low bar. So most everyone I speak to is a bit smarter than me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I just, uh, I look forward to being a better person. Boom. Is that it for this? That's it. That's it. That's all. I love you all. Wish me luck at the Arnold's. If I see you there, don't be shy. Come up, say hi. It's weirder if you're like across the room just like staring because that, that happens a lot. Just come over, say hello. I'm not that intimidating. Uh, little anecdote today, there was a, oh, I already spoke about this. I spoke about this in the last video. Uh, don't, be, don't be the child who doesn't want to speak to me. <laughs> it makes me feel bad. So come up, say hi. Uh, I'm happy to sign autographs, take time. Uh, literally, as long as I'm not walking up to do an event, um, if I'm warming up, whatever, uh, come say hello. Uh, otherwise, we look forward to getting out there, meeting people, and uh, getting back on the stage. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you soon. Check out my Patreon if you really want to support me. Check out my apparel. Check out my coaching. Check it all out. I love you, and I'll speak to you soon.